<laughs> this series has been harder to make than I thought it was going to be. 99% because uh, the nature of this series requires me to think of stuff to talk about and uh, pulling up a camera every time I want to talk about it, which uh, requires me to look the part for a video and requires me to get into the habit of recording everything, which I am not in the habit of doing yet. But uh, welcome, folks, to the Rad Cave. There are some peculiarities, pe 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 peculiar, peculiarities with living alone. <coughs> like, for example, a few weeks ago I was doing my laundry. I was out in the balcony uh, doing my laundry, putting stuff in the washing machine, turning the washing machine on. You know how it be. You know how it do. It's on the balcony outside because it's Japan and everyone does that. Um, but later I come back and my washing machine makes terrible noises. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if it blew up. Uh, now, since I'm doing laundry right now, but um, I go outside and I just look down. I'm on the second story of this building, and I look down uh, below my uh, balcony, just you know, getting a view like ah, oh, the the place I live in. And then I notice that like the parking lot below is like completely flooded, and I'm like, oh no, what's up with that? And then I notice the trail of the flood, like the flood. Like, you can see parts of the, uh, of the parking lot where it's, like, not wet, but it is stained, so you know water came there. And I look, and all of a sudden there's this straight line of water leading right up to where, right up to the building, right where my balcony is. And I check the line of water, and I check the washing machine, and they're pretty much completely synced up. And I'm like, oh no. Did doing my wa doing laundry in my washing machine cause me to flood the entire parking lot of my apartment complex? So that was a little panic. It was like one in the morning because of course it is. You expect me to do laundry at a normal time? No, no way, Jose. So I leave my apartment. I walk all the way down there, and you know it's just me standing there, lost and confused in a flooded parking lot. And I'm looking around, and I'm like, what's going on here? I, I look up at my apartment, I look at the ground. There's no water, like, on the walls, like I had feared, like, like to show water flowing down. But I was still concerned. But then I notice right below my apartment balcony, uh, someone just has a hose, like a normal watering hose, just on. So, if one... I no longer concerned about my washing machine being the source of this huge flood, you know, Noah's Ark Part 2. But, uh, two, why did someone leave a hose on in this parking lot? That's weird. Now, this being Japan, I didn't do anything. Uh, I just went back and minded my own business, but, uh, life's weird that way. Nobody prepared me for stuff like this. I have discovered that I live just across the street from a karaoke place. I discovered this the hard way, naturally. <laughs> um, what am I doing? Why am I wearing these? Hold on. We gotta keep the theming. There we go. So I discovered that I live across from a karaoke place found out the hard way uh, and you might hear them in the background as I speak but uh, you know what are you gonna do but in hearing all the livelihood of drunk Japanese people singing poorly with all their friends from their office it reminded me about how <laughs> How I'm glad I'm an introvert. And uh, before I left for Japan, I didn't really go out much. I didn't really talk to anybody. And uh, I kind of took the fact that I was an introvert for granted. Like, I just assumed that I was how I was, that introverts was just an okay thing to be, and that people understood what introverts were and how to treat them. 
But ever since moving to Japan and having to be more social because I now have a job and stuff like that, I've come to the realization that the the introvert species is just as oppressed <laughs> as they were back when I was more social. I went to a party um, because, you know, I'm, I'm a new co-worker. I want to make a good impression and I want to go to a party with some people. Uh, this was actually with uh, other Americans um, as part of my greater English-speaking community, uh, English-teaching community. And so I go over there, and it's a party with all these other Americans who teach English. And uh, I'm chilling. I, I don't want to be there. I'm dying inside, and I just want to go home. But I'm just sitting there, and a dude sits beside me and talks with me, and we'll talk, we, we talk a little bit. S you know, I'm introverted, but I'm not uh, antisocial in the sense that I can't operate in social environments. I can operate in social environments. I just have a lower sense of patience, and I don't want to be there. But that doesn't mean I'm like some sort of autistic person who just completely freezes up and just acts like an idiot. But as we're talking, <coughs> I, I talk to the dude and, like, I decide, you know, I'm going to be real. I'm going to talk about how I'm an introvert and, like, this isn't my cup of tea, but I'm just here to make a good impression and to meet everyone. So, um, I tell them sort of about, I sort of start off with, like, you know, trying to be relatable to this fellow millennial. And, uh, sometimes you see online a lot of introvert memes where they talk about how uh, sometimes I'll be out at a social event or even with friends and then all of a sudden a switch just flips in me and all of a sudden I don't want to be there and there's memes of like Kanye West smiling and all of a sudden frowning and it's like when your switch finally goes off and stuff like that and I got tired of seeing those memes because I'm like oh okay you're so special that uh you just you just get tired of social situations every now and then. Boo-hoo, everyone understands how introverts work. Shut up. But I say that to the person I'm talking to, thinking, yeah, you understand, right? You understand how it'd be, how different people are, how, hard, how they're different, and how, you know, some people aren't, you know, the most willing to be out in a social situation. And as I was saying this, the dude's smile just slowly turns into a frown. His eyebrows, like, start to go up, and he just looks so confused. Like, what I just said to him was the most insane thing he had ever heard of. And as I was talking, and I saw his expression just completely changing as I was talking, and that's when, internally, I was like, oh god... People don't understand how introverts work. People don't understand that introverts <laughs> exist and that uh, I'm screwed because I'm trying to like sound relatable because like everyone's everyone understands this, but obviously I was wrong. And since my time without I've started living alone, working at um, my job and stuff like that. I've started to value my time more, and I've started to really understand myself more as an introvert. And I've started to understand that this world isn't really built for introverts. In fact, if you're introverted, if you commit the cardinal sin of just happening to prefer to being alone in your home doing nothing, all of a sudden, that's weird, or it's a problem. My first few weeks, even months, of living here in Japan, I was trying to make a good impression, trying to go to every social event I'm invited to, trying to take up every opportunity that's given to me, and after the first few weeks or months or whatever, I started to want to die. I was not enjoying myself, I was in pain, and I was just getting a bit irritable, getting a bit impatient. And I'm like, why is this? I was talking to one of my friends, um... And they're like, you know, don't push yourself too hard, man. You know, just chill. Uh, you just moved here. Take a moment to just lay back, relax, and get back in touch with yourself. Because, you know, you don't want to... You don't want to go to a country and change who you are as a person. You moved to a country for a reason that you felt would complement who you already were as a person. 
So get back in touch with who you are or else this whole thing is for nothing. Like it's good to get out there to make good impressions and to take those opportunities, but also don't do any don't force yourself to do anything that just isn't you. I'm like, okay, so I took a few uh, took a little bit of time off to myself, you know. You know, there was a clipboard talking about a new party, like the like the third party that month from my workplace, and I just signed off saying I couldn't go. And uh, I chilled at my apartment for the entire weekend. And you know what? I loved every single minute of it. I loved just chilling at my apartment, doing whatever I wanted to do. And it's like I already give so many hours to this workplace. Why do I volunteer my time off? My, what time I do have to the same people, you know. But, you know, in conversations with people, they ask about, like, what do you do? What do you do for fun? Like, have you gone, uh, have you done this famous thing that's here? Have you done this thing? And I'm like, no, because that stuff doesn't appeal to me. What appeals to me is staying at home. And it's like, oh, why move to a place if you're just going to stay indoors? That's not how, that's not the way to look at it. The way to look at it is, why would you move to a place and then make your time miserable here by doing stuff that you don't like. You know, we enjoy things differently. We enjoy living in a place differently. There's different things we value, and there's, you know, different things that are important to us over different uh, over other different things that a more social person might look at and think you're just uh, completely, like, unrelatable whatsoever and you know what I don't care about being relatable to those sorts of people I care about living my life how I want to live it and sure like there's stuff you have to do like work and paying bills and stuff but with what time I have I want to do it I want to spend it doing what I enjoy or doing something to help uh what's the word to help me be on the path to do a thing that I enjoy if I can't get it instantly you know that's how life works and uh I shouldn't live my life trying to please other people, you know, or trying to make other people have a good impression of me when they will never understand who I am, who I really am. So, like, why bother with it? But since I'm living alone and living life, you know, on my own and trying to develop my own social network, I've noticed that introverts aren't as understood as I thought they were when I was living in my introverted bubble uh, in America. And I've, it, it, I cannot explain to you how much I just felt miserable uh, in the first few weeks or months living here when I had all this stuff to do and volunteering my time to meet with other people. And recently I've started, you know, chilling, being by myself in here. And uh, there's always part of my mind that was like, this isn't what you're supposed to be doing because if someone else saw you, what your weekend was, they would criticize you. They would judge you. But I'm starting to kill that side because I know that's stupid. And why would I care what people think of me when I'm the one who gets to determine what to do with my life? Because uh, when I die, I'm dying. <laughs> I'm not taking anyone else with me, you know. I alone get to look at my life and say, yeah, I spent my time how I wanted to. And we all have different definitions of a good life or spending life doing good stuff or having an, a fulfilling life. I guess that's it. We all have different definitions of what a fulfilling life is. My definition of fulfillment at this stage in my life is to be able to be int uh, reflective, introspective, um, and to just work on my craft, working on videos, working on writing. I recently got a drawing tablet. I've started to practice digital art. Um, hopefully I can get good at that at some point. <laughs> but, you know, I've been practicing a little bit every day. And, like, one person would be coming like, Hey, Radix, do you have any plans tonight? And, like, in my head, I'm like, my plan is to write, work on videos, and draw. And before, I would think that wasn't, like, a genuine excuse. Like, I would have to say no and then then get wrapped up in whatever the person wanted me to do. Like, the old me, by old, I mean, like, a few months ago, if not a few weeks ago, would have said no. And in my head, I'm like, I wanted to write. I wanted to draw. I want to work on videos. 
but I wouldn't think that's actually stuff to do because the rest of society doesn't look at it like that. And I would say no. And then that person would like say, you want to go to this party? And then I have no choice but to say yes because I just said that I don't have any other plans. Saying no would be like, no, because I specifically don't want to hang out with you, which comes off as fairly rude. But what I did a few days ago was like, hey, Radix, do you do you have any plans tonight? And then in my head, I'm like, I want to work on videos. I want to write. I want to draw. And so I say, yes, I do have plans tonight. <laughs> and he's like, oh, man, I wanted to go to this party with you. And I'm like, oh, yeah, sorry, I'm busy tonight. You know. Because if I did go to that party, you know what I would have been doing? I would have been sitting there waiting for the party to end. I would have been thinking how I wanted to be anywhere else but there. And how I wanted to be at home working on my crafts and stuff like that. Spending time alone, listening to music, chilling on the internet. And then I would get home and then I would feel like I wasted the day. Wasted another day of my life, of my limited amount of time on this earth. Trying to please somebody else. So, what I did the day I said, yes, I do have plans, and I went home and did exactly what I wanted to do, I didn't feel any regret whatsoever. So, I don't know, I guess the point of this segment is to talk to the fellow introverts out there, and I know most of you probably are introverts if you're on this channel. Uh, I would say, obviously there's a time and place for some stuff, sometimes you will have to do stuff that you don't want to do. But when you can, and when it's the best option, you know, don't force yourself to do uh, something that will make you miserable, I guess. Even if society looks at it as something that you should do, um, that you should be that social person. And I don't know why society doesn't understand that there are... Why it's so hard for people to understand that there are introverts and extroverts when... There's a sizable portion of both, it's just extroverts tend to be out in public because that's what extroverts do. But, um... But yeah, that's just what I wanted to say. I, I just, just wanted to talk about this little revolution that I've been going through, trying to reclaim who I am by being an introvert. And I've been enjoying my time so much better when I'm by myself, and now that I've retaken my own time, and I'm working on the stuff I want to work on, Stuff has it's been so much better. I've even been happier at work, <laughs> so uh, you know I think it benefits everyone. Me doing what I like to do. So yeah, that's this segment. We live in a society. Introverts rise up. To my left is the Rad Computer, complete in full glory. Uh, it's running like a dream. You've seen the Destiny Two video I've done. Um, so you know it's here, you know it's powerful, you know it can do pretty much anything I want it can I, I want it to do. But uh it was quite a quest getting that computer. And I don't mean paying for it, and it was a bad amount of money. But I did I had the money, and that's all good. The problem was trying to way to get my money to Amazon. So <clears throat> Here's the thing about that. So, I don't really have any sort of card. I have a debit card for an American account. Alright, that sounds good. Except there's not much money on it. <coughs> it it does not, certainly does not have enough for a RAD computer. So, if I want to order it on Amazon, I'm going to need some form of payment. Some form to get the money to... Uh, Amazon and uh, my card that I have won't work because it doesn't have enough money on it ah but Japan's got you covered see Japan doesn't like to do its card stuff Japan loves to do stuff in cash so it has ATMs everywhere <coughs> and uh, Amazon Japan has the option for you to click order on Amazon and set it to be paid at an ATM. What happens is, when you do that, they get the item ready for shipping, but before they ship it out to you, they send you an email with a confirmation number and some bank information for you to go to the ATM, input the information for what you want to get, and then manually insert the cash into the ATM, and that transfers over to Amazon. And once they get your payment, the item gets shipped. 
So that's cool. Except I have to have I have to find time to go to the ATM. There's really only one ATM uh, in my area, so that's inconvenient. But also the ATM has hours, as if the ATM needs to rest from just you know sitting there and being an automatic teller, an automated teller. I thought the whole point of the ATM was that it was for people who couldn't go to the bank during bank hours, but whatever. The ATM's hours are almost exactly the same as my working hours. So I really can't go to the ATM unless a miracle happens where, like, I have a day off of work or I can get a break to go over to the ATM. <clears throat> so that's already an issue. So I see the RAD computer and I'm like, I want this. Do I have the money? Yes. Uh-huh. Now I just need to figure out how to get the money to it. And I've done some ATM payments for some Amazon stuff before. So I go to the ATM, I order the computer, and it says, go to your ATM and transfer the money. I'm like, okay, I go to the ATM, try to transfer the money, and I get told by the ATM that it doesn't do payments of over $1,000, and the red computer was over $1,000. So I'm like, well, that's not good. My one my one method of paying Amazon uh, is not going to work. So I'm like, okay. Maybe I can ask my bank if they do debit cards, because I have the Japanese bank account. That's where the money is. Uh, so maybe I can get a Japanese debit card. I go to the bank, you know, trying to find a way to squeeze in when I have the time to go to the bank because um, it has the same hours as my working hours, but I fi finally get to the bank and say, hey, do you guys do debit cards? And they're like, no. Why would you even ask us that, you insane, insane a person? So I'm like, okay, you guys just straight up don't do debit cards. That's weird, but not too out of place for Japan, to be honest. Again, they really like their cards. Um, I mean, they're their cash, not their cards. That's the problem. They don't like their cards. So I'm like, okay, well that gets me into a jiffy, into a little pickle. So I'm like, well maybe maybe I need to find a way to transfer money from my Japanese bank account to my American debit account that has the car that I can use for online shopping. So I ask, hey, can you transfer money to an American bank account? And they're like, huh, no. I'm like, okay, well that's weird. It's like, so what can you do? We can store money. Which, like, I'm get, I guess, I guess, I guess that's, if you can do that, I guess you can be called a bank, but, you know, that's about it. So, I continue on my merry way, uh, figuring out what am I going to do. Oh, no, this is terrible. So, eventually, I learned about this app that will let me transfer money from a Japanese bank account to my American bank account. And how it does it is it sort of goes as a go-between. They have the ability to transfer money from their Japanese account to their to American accounts. So basically, what I have to do is transfer my money to their account, which they will transfer to my American account. So that's how that works. So I'm like, okay, uh, I'll, I'll do that. <coughs> so I sign up for this app, and then they're like, okay, we need to verify that it's you. I'm like, okay, and they're like, upload your personal number. Japan has a thing that's sort of similar to a social security number. Um, you know, it's a number that identifies you. So they're like, upload a document with your personal secure, with your personal number. And I'm like, okay, uh, I don't have anything with that on it, because I just got here. Supposedly there's paperwork coming in the mail for it, but that won't come until years. So I'm like, oh no, well, I don't know my personal number. That's bad. So, you know, spending more time doing nothing, not being able to buy the red computer... And then I find some information where apparently you can go to your town hall and request a document verifying your residence. And that document will have your personal number on it. And I'm like, okay, the town hall has the same hours as I do. So how am I going to get there? Eventually a holiday shows up. You know, I am waiting for the calendar to give me holidays to do this. Well, no, I couldn't have done it on a holiday because everything else is closed on a holiday. I somehow make my way to the town hall, and I'm like, hey, 
can I have this proof of residence document? And they're like, hey, yo, I got you, fam. Uh, that'll cost three bucks. I'm like, it cost me three bucks? And I was like, it's got to cost you three bucks. And I'm like, oh, seems like a lot for a document saying that I'm here, though. And it's like, three bucks? And I'm like, okay, whatever. So I give them the three bucks, and then they give me the document. I'm like, thank you. I go home, take a picture of it, upload it to the app, ba-da-da, bing, ba-da-da, boom, as the Italian-Americans say. <clears throat> Later, I get an email saying, hey, the document you sent us doesn't have the personal number on it. I'm like, it doesn't have the what? It doesn't have the personal number on it. The whole point I, the whole point of me going there and getting that document and giving the three bucks, again, three bucks, was to get that personal number. And it didn't have the personal number on it? Okay. Come to find out that I need to walk into the town hall and say, hey, can I get that document with proof of my, proof of my residence? And with my personal number on it, I had to specifically order it. Like, I'm going to Burger King, and I want a burger, but I don't want the mayonnaise. Because, you know, every Burger King burger has mayonnaise on it. So you have to specifically say it. So I'm like, okay, that's inconvenient. But I go to the... <laughs> Eventually, the stars align for me to go to the... Uh, uh, town hall again. I'm like, hey, can you give me that document proving my verification and uh, proving that I live here? And they're like, sure thing. Pretty sure you already asked for that, though, but whatever. We don't know what you're planning to do. And I'm like, also, can I get that with a personal number, please? And they're like, personal number coming right up, sir. And then they yeah, come out with my burger with no mayonnaise. And I'm like, I asked for the proof of residence with the personal number. I didn't ask for a burger with no mayonnaise. I'm like, <laughs> our mistake. They sound very similar in Japanese. So, um... <laughs> so, um... I get the stuff for my personal number. Cost another $3. But I, uh... I go back to my home, upload the picture, I'm like, there. You have my personal number now. Is that enough? And they're like, okay, thank you for this proof of identity. Now we're going to need another form of proof of residence. So what's going to happen is... The app is going to mail you a document with, like, a secret code on it. Snail mail you it to your address that your document says your address is. It will take about two weeks. I'm very tired. So I'm like, okay, I wait about two weeks before I get that document. Finally get to input the code and like, okay, we have verified that you're you. We have gone through the process. Excellent. Uh, step two, uh, you need to transfer money to our bank account via your net banking. You need to do the bank on the internet. I'm like, excuse me, what? How do I do net banking? So I go to the bank, like, what's net banking? And they're like, what's what? And I'm like, okay, is there no way to do any sort of banking stuff online? And they're like, no, not that I'm aware of. So I go home and do a Google search and find that they do do net banking stuff. So I'm like, okay, hire better people. But, um, so I get the net banking stuff, try to go through the application process, which is long and grueling. And all I have at this point in time is a phone. My laptop isn't really cooperating with me. And every time I fill in the application, I hit enter, and it says, you took too long to enter the application, so I have to go over and redo it again and hope I memorize what I answer for every single piece of the form, or else I have to do it all over again, and I have to do it real fast. But eventually I finish the most painful application pro- oh, there's a problem where it says, sorry, the phone number you entered wasn't the phone number we have on record for this account. I'm like, there is no phone number on record for this account because when I got here, I got my bank account and they asked for a phone number, but I didn't have a Japanese phone number yet. So, I, so they said, oh, you can do it later. I'm like, okay. So I had to wait, you know, another three weeks before I can go to the bank and rec and say, hey, this is my phone number. Can you put it into your books? Um, and then once I do that, I go through the whole application process again, mind you. And finally, it all wraps up for them saying, okay. Now we will send you the final password through snail mail. So I wait another two weeks for them to mail me the snail mail with the password and stuff I need. About three months have passed since I got here, I think, 
And um, ultimately, I get the snail mail, finally finish the application process. And I'm like, okay, please let me transfer the money. So I use the information the app gave me to transfer information from my bank. And then I, I do the transfer. It takes about a week or two to actually go through. But finally, the money for the computer is transferred to my American debit card. I input that information into Amazon, click order, ba-da-da-bing, ba-da-da-boom, and now I have the RAD computer over there. The most grueling, most the longest process I've ever had to do for anything ever. I want to die. Please kill me. Yeah. So, after seeing the first couple of my videos, the lazy koalas have determined that my walls are too bland, and they think that the best option for me is to send me posters. Posters. Okay. Um, I guess I think there's room. It's just I kind of wanted some wall space that wasn't distracting for videos, but we can we can work with posters. And the first poster has come in. Uh, I believe this is from Cody. Um, and it's not really much of a surprise when the box has a label saying what the poster is specifically. So um, that didn't go so well to plan, but whatever. So, I think they're requiring me to uh, do videos unboxing this stuff. So that's what I'm here to do right now. As far as I understand, it's only Twisted and Cody sending me stuff. So this is one of two. So there's a rubber band. I believe this is my first item from America to arrive here. Uh, there's tape. Typically you'd want to cut it open with some sort of sharp device. I'm just going to use my hands because I'm not a coward. You can't even really see the thing. Hold up. Alright. I think that works. Okay. So you want to get the tape off. Here's the hard bit. Congratulations, you won. There's a lot of airbags in here. You know, just in case it gets into a car accident. Airbags. Another airbag. Another Amazon.com slip telling me exactly what this is. <laughs> Cody uh, listed his name as God. So it says, Hi, my real name. Enjoy your gift from God. Thanks, God. Then we have this, and the box is empty besides this, which is strange. How do I open this? So the label says it's the Katsuhika Hokusai, the Great Wave, uh, the Great Wave Japanese. It should be the waves off the coast of Kanagawa, I believe the work is called. That famous Japanese art. Oh wow, this is intricate. Boom, boom. And... We have, oh, the, the waves off the coast of Kanagawa, the famous art painting. Uh, give me a second while I try to figure out where to put this, although I don't know how I'm going to put this on a wall when I don't really have anything besides, like, basic uh, scotch tape. So, we'll, we'll see how this goes. 
and boom it's a bit messy over there so I won't show the area too much but I stuck it right beside the map of Japan uh, there is it looks kinda weird because it's all centered over there like it's not really symmetrical with anything but uh, there's enough room in, uh, just above my computer but I kinda want to keep the space above my computer empty but yeah that's the unboxing for Cody's uh, Waves of Kanagawa. And I guess I'll come back once Twisted's poster has come in. So just as a point of clarification, uh, I used to do a podcast on this channel called The Commander's Cabin. Uh, I just want to make it clear that The Commander's Cabin has been divided in two. Basically, the Lazy Koalas podcast, like I said in the last episode of the Rad Cave, is going to make its home on the Commander Radics channel. I don't need two podcasts on my channel, so the traditional podcast format is going to be replaced with the Lazy Koalas podcast. However, the Lazy Koalas podcast isn't the Commander's Cabin podcast, it's not me talking about stuff that's going on in my life, so I think the Rad Cave covers that part of the commander's cabin so the commander's cabin has gone in two different directions if you wanted the traditional podcast experience you can see that in the lazy koalas podcast if you want me telling about the stuff i would have talked about on the commander's cabin podcast uh that's what you got the rad cave for um and i think there will be some segments of the rad cave that will pretty much just be commander's cabin because i'm not in a physical appearance to appear on camera all the time every time I want to talk about something so there will be I guess small commander's cabin-esque podcast type uh, fragments in the rad cave uh, every now and then so yeah I actually enjoyed commander's cabin and I like the rad cave but it's sort of different so I'm still reserving the right to pick the commander's cabin right back up again I'll reserve that right but for now I'm mentally categorizing Commander's Cabin as having been split into L the Lazy Quilla's podcast and the Rad Cave. I need to get more used to speaking in my apartment. I'm always paranoid that people can hear me through the walls, and I really hope that's not the case. I'm also recording this at like 10 at night, which doesn't help. And it's interesting to me that I have this aversion to talking in my apartment. Um, and talking at night when like one of the things that I didn't like about you know being in a house with my family was that I was kind of restricted to when I could record you know not to wake everyone up and I kind of wanted the freedom to be able to record whatever I wanted whenever I wanted even if it was like 2 a.m. because frankly I'm more creative and I have the motivation to do stuff at 2 a.m. much more so than any time earlier than that and here I am living alone, but I still feel paranoid over my voice carrying through the walls here. That could be a problem. I hope it doesn't carry. Uh, so far, what I've tested, the things only carry between apartments when the windows are open, and all my windows are very decidedly closed right now. Uh, but it's just very interesting to see how what I thought living alone would be, and the freedoms I thought that would come with that, just aren't there. You know, it's very annoying.